I got my coffee. Dude, it's so awkward starting the video. Let's just be real. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so you start it like this, or do you start it with a big smile? Okay, so yesterday was my first day shooting the Fuji GFX in the studio, and I absolutely loved it. So much so that I wanted to come back and make a video today. Two reasons, number one, there's so much technology coming out right now. You have the new Sony a7R 3 which is shooting ridiculous ISO. They showed like an eagle or a hawk flying into the water and capturing a fish and it never missed focus. Uh, looks like just an amazing piece of technology. You have the Nikon 850 coming out. I'll leave that to Pro Nose Photo. Uh, he will, he will show, he'll tell you all about that camera. He's a fangirl. And you also have the, the Canon systems. You have the 5D4 and you have the 5DSR, which are amazing systems. I actually have a 5D4 and yesterday in my video I talked about why, or I talked about selling my 5DSR to bring the Fuji into the studio and I want to kind of elaborate on that. So now before I had the 5DSR and the Fuji GFX, I actually had a Hasselblad H3D2 and I absolutely love that camera until I took it on a trip. So I ended up going on a trip to Israel to do some landscape photography and I took my house abroad as you would do uh, because I wanted the best image quality. I wanted the versatility of ha shooting just the biggest image, the basically the biggest image I could possible for printing later on. And taking that camera, exposing it to the elements of Israel and lugging it around Israel just was so troublesome that when I got home, I broke down and bought a 5DSR. I sold the Hasselblad, sold all my lenses, and bought the Canon 5DSR, which was an amazing camera, I, and it still is an amazing camera. In fact, I would have kept my 5DSR um, if I wasn't a working photographer, and what I mean by that is I needed the money to sell off that Canon camera to buy the Fuji camera. So it isn't like I just have unlimited amounts of money and unlimited uh, resources to buy any camera I wanted to. Um, I had to have a come to Jesus meeting and really just say, hey, like this is the camera that I want in the studio. Now, one of the things that drew me to the Fuji was that it feels like a DSLR, um, but it's a medium format camera. Now it's on the smaller side of medium format, but the fact that it feels like a DSLR, it packs into my Pelican case like a DSLR, uh, that was just a huge selling point for me. Yesterday using it hands on, I felt like I was using my 5DSR to be honest. Now in terms of autofocus, in terms of all those things, honestly I felt like I didn't lose anything. The autofocus in this camera is great. It's not as slow as the Hasselblad where the Hasselblad was constantly hunting for focus but it's no dog. It, I would say that it, it easily held up to the autofocusing system of the 5DSR. That system is a great autofocusing system and by no means am I doing a scientific comparison in the two. I'm just saying in my hands, in a real world experience, I felt like I didn't lose anything. Uh, one of the things I was worried about, two things, and one of them I mentioned in my video yesterday, one was sync speed. So I was worried about being able to sync my pro photo lights with this only at 1 25th of a second. So I ended up using some Lee filters and some ND filters. No problems at all. Now, if you're in the realm where you need high sync speeds, maybe this camera doesn't work for you. But for me, I was only getting 1 60th of a second, 2 50th of a second max out of my Canon cameras. So going down to 1 25th of a second wasn't that bad. And because I have the Profoto B1, um, they're supposed to come out with the HHS or HSS system, a high speed sync system for this camera. So it'll be a very short time before I do have some high speed sync capabilities. Uh, the other side of this was using the EVF, the electronic viewfinder. And honestly, it was a tool that actually helped me. I, my studio is really, really dark when I shoot. And so I thought that was going to be the bummer side or it was going to lag or I was going to see noise and all this weird stuff. And it was perfect. Um, in fact, because, because of it being so dark, it actually helped me see the focus points better and see some of the things that I normally wouldn't see um, using the 5DSR. Now that's not to say maybe I have bad highs, um, but I didn't, I, again, it wasn't something that I had to stop and think about. Control wise, the menu system is a little bit clunkier in this. It isn't, I, I'm used to shooting with the Canon system. So for me, the Canon is really, really fast and easy to use. 
I found the Fuji menus to be a little bit clunky or a little, a little bit bloated, but it wasn't anything that got in the way of my shooting yesterday. And I'm still learning the camera. So as I learn the camera, there's gonna be little things that I learned that are probably gonna make the camera a lot easier to use. So I can't really say um, that it's worse. I'm just saying it didn't get in the way of my shooting. Uh, so do you need this camera? No, if you have a 5DSR and you like it, you love it, um, you're having, you're having, you like it, you love it, you want more of it, um, and you're having no problems shooting with that camera, then keep it. By all means, it's a tool. Um, you don't need the latest and greatest. I think a lot of times we get caught up in thinking that we need the latest and greatest camera, phone, the iPhone X emoji, whatever the case may be, um, to be creative. And being creative um, is about exploring your personal pursuit of your own work, like doing the thing that separates you from everyone else. And a lot of times we spend a lot more money on this stuff than we do on actually shooting stuff and implementing stuff that will make us unique and different or we don't spend the time of shooting the things that are in our heads. Um, instead we just buy more and more gear and we don't get anywhere with that. And as a working photographer, I wanted something that was gonna inspire me. And this camera, the Fuji GFX, is that inspiration for me because I really like shooting the Hasselblad. I like that more square. This is four by three, so it isn't quite one by one but I like shooting a more square aspect ratio and so I'm able to unlock more of the way that I see the world. I like seeing the world through a square uh, viewfinder or more of a four by three than I do that longer aspect ratio. And so for me, this was just something that I felt like would help me with where I wanted to go as a photographer and that's why I ended up tr selling and I had to sell uh, my 5DSR to grab this camera. If I could have both cameras I would have kept them both, 100%. I would have kept the 5DSR in the studio because it is a tool that serves its own purpose. Um, but because I needed that cash to buy this, that's why I swapped. So if you have a 5DSR, I wasn't hating on that camera yesterday. I just wanna let you know that's a great, a great, great tool. This is why, that it, I'm making this video, I wanted to tell you why um, I decided to go with the GFX. So I hope that helps. I hope if you're out there and you're thinking about buying a new camera, um, I get what you feel like is going to inspire you. Get what you feel like you need, not necessarily what other people tell you you need. I'm not telling you to go out there to go go out there and buy this camera. Um, go buy the GFX. I'm not saying that, um, but I am saying it's a great tool. So if you're looking to get into medium format, if you're a landscape photographer and you wanted medium format, uh, take a look at the GFX. I think you'll be really really happy. I'm gonna have more videos coming out about the GFX this week. So subscribe and I'll just keep putting stuff out there for you guys and hopefully you guys can see the, uh, take an inside look at what this camera is really all about. All right.